Hey there, this is Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources for the new college instructor. So if that's you, go ahead and click like and subscribe below. In today's video, I'm talking about Pear Deck. I mentioned it before, comparing it to Mentimeter, but today I want to talk about how to use Pear Deck in the face-to-face -face classroom, because I really feel it's beneficial, not just for online courses, but when you're with your students in person. So I'm going to go through my process of using this tool when you're in the regular in-person classroom. You need Google Slides in order to use Pear Deck, so keep that in mind. But if you have been using PowerPoint up to now, not a big deal. You can literally open up your PowerPoint, copy the slide thumbnails, and paste it into Google Slides, and they'll copy over quite easily. So that's just a tip there if you have been using PowerPoint up to this point. Now, in this case, these are examples of types of Pear Deck lecture templates you might use. It's part of my High Flex Activity Ideas collection that I'll link below. But basically here, Pear Deck is interactive slides on Google Slides. And so what you would do is, let's say you have a PowerPoint lecture that you've created, right? And now you've transferred it to Google Slides, or maybe you made it here originally. And it's, in this case, a lecture about writing. In this case, it's about a rhetorical triangle of writer, audience, and purpose. And so you create your slides, your lecture. But what you do then is, if you have already have Pear Deck here, then you click Add-ons, Pear Deck for Google Add-ons, and then open it. If you don't have it yet, you can literally just Google Pear Deck and download the extension. And so this screen pops up on the right here. You have your options of what types of questions you can ask your students. And in this case, in the free version, right, you can ask them to do a short answer, a multiple choice answer, a numerical answer, or, you know, this isn't exactly the answer, but it's you can link a website to a slide so they can see it easily. So really, it's these first three that you have here. I mainly use short answer or multiple choice. OK, and so, you know, in this case, here you have the beginning of a lecture and in the first page of here's information that I'm teaching. But then to follow up, I created a slide that is going to be a Pear Deck slide. And so in this case, I'm asking to them to apply the concept of audience to a current writing experience that they've had, right? Because that's one of the terms here. And so what you do is you're gonna go ahead and say, you know what, uh, this is gonna be a Pear Deck slide. So it's gonna be a short answer. And so I click that and now it's a Pear Deck slide and you have a little icon down there that shows it. And so I, I'll show you, but when you're actually doing a lecture, they'll get to this slide and through the website, the Pear Deck website, they'll be able to answer the question anonymously because you can do it where they sign in with their Google account. In that case, it won't be anonymous, but it's a bit too much time in, in my opinion. So I always keep their answers anonymous by not requiring a login. So then you keep going, right? You do a bit more lecturing, give more examples, and then now you design another slide that's a question. So in this case, what part of the lecture so far do you find the most confusing? And once again, if you have the add-ons open, you can say, all right, this is another short answer question. And so it will change it to be an interactive slide. And then you keep going, right? So maybe at the very end, now you're going to ask, you know, how confident do you feel in understanding the rhetorical triangle? One being no confidence, all the way to five being full confidence. So obviously one, two, three, four, or five. So in that case, they can say, all right, this is a number one. And so you say, yes, update slide. And now that's interactive slide as well. You can also go ahead and say, okay, add a new slide and make that multiple choice. And so you see here, students view and interact with the website embedded on their device and it projects on here. So next, so you have here, well, what are our options for choices? You have option A, option B, or option C. And then you can add more if you'd like, update slide. So in this case, it would be a question, you know, what do you want to work on next? A, and you have an answer. B, and you have an answer. Or C, and you have an answer. Okay? And then they'll answer A, B, or C because it's a multiple choice slide. Okay? And so you can create as many interactive slides as you want in comparison to how many are just straight up lecture material. Once you have it all created, right, now you're ready to use it in class. So all you would do here is you would click start lesson, not share, 
right? Because that's regular Google slide. You say start lesson. And then you can decide, well, is it in person? Is it synchronous, right? Instructor paste, or is it asynchronous? Maybe a homework assignment. And so in this case, it's instructor paste because you're going to be doing it live in class. And now you have this page, very similar to Kahoot. And so students will go and they'll go into join PD and they'll say, okay, what is the code? It's EOA, PUA. Okay, how are you feeling today? Feeling good. And now the presentation is there on their screen. And in your screen, you see how many are connected, right? So you can wait until you have the right number and you can say, all right, let's start class. And now this is projected on your screen. And so, okay, all right, today we're talking about writing, big picture ideas, and you go on through and you have your lecture, right? No interaction yet. And then you get to, okay, here's our first interaction slide. So apply the concept of audience to a current writing experience you've had. On the student side, they're looking at the slides and now they have a place to answer. So maybe they say, you know, I wrote a tweet to the governor of my you know, state because, and then, right? So the audience of a specific piece of writing. And then on your hand, you only see this, but then you can say, you know what? Show responses on the bottom here. And now you see the responses from your students. And it can be in list form or it can be a grid layout. So as another example, so then they say, okay, that's what they said here. And they have another example that they wanna share. You know, I wrote an email to my boss, so I had to be super formal in my writing, you know, right? So here's another example of audience. And again, now you see them on here. So you can show the responses, hide the responses, so you can discuss them as a class. If you don't want any more answers to be given, you can say lock screen, right? And on your student side, they say, okay, no more responses for the slide. Here are the two ones that you gave or the one that you gave or the five, whatever the case may be. And so you can pause here and you can then interact with the class. This is a great example, talking about emailing your boss. Let's talk more about that. How is this different from emailing your priest or emailing your mother, or emailing your best friend, right? All that kind of discussion while you're doing your lecture. So it's not just you talking the whole time, you're pausing, getting student responses, before moving on. But then you move on, right? And then more of you lecturing, more of you lecturing. Okay, here's a new interactive slide, right? What part of the lecture so far do you find the most confusing? And so the student answers a question, it's this, right? And so you're on here, you wait maybe a minute or two, show responses, and the responses are there, okay? Let's go ahead and go all the way to the end to show you the other ones we talked about, right? So how confident do you feel in your understanding of the triangle? One is no confidence, five is full. On the student side here, they can say, okay, I am pretty unconfident still, right? I'm a two. And so you go back and you say show responses and zero through five, right? We have that response. So obviously the rest of them will populate once students respond to it. And then we keep going, right? What do you want to work on next, A, B, or C? And on the student side, they can say, I want to work on B, okay? And once again, you show your responses and you'll see how many choose the different answers in this multiple choice question, okay? Something else to consider, if you click down here in the right new prompt, there are some templates built into this system. So you might have, you know what? Um, if you're going through here, anything striking your fancy, maybe you wanna do kind of a, a check on how they're feeling. So we're gonna do this. And now a new slide has been created. Drag your dot to how you're feeling, right? Are you, you know, keep going, I'm a little confused, stop, I need help. So on the student side, they'll click and they say, I'm good, I understand, right? And they click that. When you show the responses, you'll see how many circles are in each. Right, so you can do that and create more and more prompts as part of it using the templates. But then once you're done, you go ahead and click end and you say, okay, well that was from week one, class one, section three, right? And you save and end the session.
if you want to save the responses to your dashboard. I don't tend to save a lot because I don't use it in that way. It's more just for me to make my lectures interactive versus collecting data. So in my case, I would just say, you know, cancel and, and an end session without naming, right? And so in my case, it doesn't matter that much what the answers were. It was more about the interaction. And so that's how you use Pear Deck. So it's a really great way to create, you know, communication with your students while you're lecturing to make sure that they're on track, they're paying attention, they're understanding. And then, you know, again, you can have that data later on, or you can just go on with your next activity or until class ends with this type of approach to doing lectures. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and click like below. And again, if you want more teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources, go ahead and click subscribe and see my description for more related videos.